If you turn on the TV or read the news, you'll quickly find multiple examples of aggression. These range from socially accepted forms like sports to more socially unaccepted forms. Aggression is everywhere, leading some to argue it's instinctual and biological, while others point to learned behavior and social context. One of the earliest perspectives on aggression was proposed by John Dollard. He suggested frustration from an event or situation often leads to aggressive action as a release for this built up emotional frustration. This frustration aggression hypothesis can be exemplified through the kicking the dog analogy. To understand this, let's imagine a person who's had a difficult day at work being yelled at by his boss. This person doesn't retaliate towards his boss to avoid being fired. This built up frustration may lead him to come home and kick the dog to release his frustration. No, no dogs were harmed in the making of this example. This hypothesis has some merit and has been used to explain links between job loss as well as economic deprivation on aggressive and violent behavior. However, it also has some drawbacks. Not everyone reacts to frustration this way, and it only explains aggression with provocation. Additionally, some evidence shows that contrary to the hypothesis, venting may increase aggression rather than providing a cathartic effect. Later perspectives on aggression include Dolph Silman's excitation transfer model. This model suggests that arousal from one situation, like heightened emotions or adrenaline, can carry over to another situation and influence behavior. This model proposes that it's not the initial source of the arousal that triggers aggression, but rather how that arousal is interpreted. If someone misattributes their arousal to the current situation, it can intensify reactions and increase the likelihood of aggression. For example, returning to our dog analogy, the man who is frustrated by his boss may carry that residual arousal home, at which point, when his dog does something mildly annoying such as bringing in mud, this residual arousal may trigger an aggressive response towards the dog. This model has the advantage of providing a broader range of situations, like exercise or the thrill of a roller coaster, and emotions that could transfer over into new situations. It also specifies conditions for when prior arousal will lead to aggression. For example, if someone correctly attributes their arousal to a previous situation, then aggression will not increase. However, if they misattribute their arousal to the current situation, then aggression will be more likely. The model also stipulates that an aggressive response is more likely if the person has learned aggressive behavior previously. Indeed, while arousal and biology may be one component why people display aggression, a large component also comes from our social learning through direct or even vicarious experiences, including those present in the media that legitimize aggressive behavior.